Leg three of the Volvo Ocean Race has been a physical battle and a mental challenge, with winds rarely dipping below 25 knots and freezing seas for the entire 6,500 mile leg. Day-to-day -day life proved to be strenuous, not only on deck, but also below, as trademark Southern Ocean conditions provided zero comfort for the teams. Yeah, it's been a very brutal leg so far, like it's uh, very demanding conditions, always fast, always wet. Everyone's, I think, feeling the push at the moment, everyone's pretty tired. And you can see sometimes the, uh, the tiredness affects people a bit. Arctic mink whales provided some light relief for Sun Hung Kai Scallywag and Team Axa Nobel as they charged past at speeds much faster than the Volvo Ocean 65s. They're on a mission to get somewhere. We're calling it the bull rush. I think it's mating season and they're, they're rushing to get somewhere. They're doing like 17 knots. We're doing 16 and now we're overtaking it. It was somewhere around 10 whales and they were super fast coming out of the water sticking the their full nose out and it was quite special. Since leaving Cape Town, the battle for the lead has been fierce. Mafre then broke the deadlock after 10 days at sea, snatching the lead from Dongfeng race team with just 1,500 nautical miles left to Melbourne. For Dongfeng race team, deja vu of leg two struck, watching their training partner and rivals Mafre sail past them in the final stages of the leg. But we, we, we pushed hard enough and the average speed were high all the time, so we knew that we couldn't lose much even if we were losing. And of course, when we saw we gained, was was even better, right? With a narrow seven-mile advantage over a hard-charged Team Brunel, Vestas 11th Hour Racing in third pulled the trigger on engaging stealth mode, cloaking their position for 24 hours in a bid to elude their Dutch competition and close the gap on second place Dongfeng Race Team. Oh, I just hoping we gained, or at least held them. We're getting lifted now, so uh, it'd be nice to see them getting lifted as well. This is us. We're going this way because it's lifting, and Don Feng is going that way, so we go well behind them. Four days out from the finish, mechanical issues on board Dongfeng race team threatened to end their leg when a crucial control system for the keel broke on the port side. Yeah, so basically the um, the port keel ram, which pushes the keel from side to side, uh, where it attaches to the actual boat, um, the whole fitting is cracked. And uh, we're not sure how it happened or what, but um, I think it's from the slamming, but uh, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> With 300 miles to run, heart rates were lifted on board the Chinese flag team, fabricating a temporary fix for the keel. But now only 10 miles separated Dongfeng race team, Vestas 11th hour racing and Team Brunel. 14 days after leaving Cape Town, Mafre crossed the line in Melbourne to take the leg win with double points awarded, solidifying their place at the top of the overall standings and claiming back-to-back -back wins for the last two legs. Well, of course, very happy after uh, winning this uh, third leg and, uh, you know, with, uh, with the second one we won as well, uh, it puts us in a good position in the leaderboard, but uh, I think we know very well uh, how much is uh, left in this race and how the things can get wrong, so we have to be very careful, enjoy the moment, of course, but uh, keep working as we are till now and prepare the next leg, which starts in, in just in a week. Dongfeng race team sailed into Melbourne on Christmas Day to take second, holding off Vestas 11th hour racing in third, but the two teams now find themselves tied in the overall standings. Yeah, we're happy to be here in Melbourne. Um, another podium finish, which is, uh, I think, always something you got to be happy with. It's nice to be here on Christmas. And you know, it was a really tough leg, um, tough conditions. Um, the boat held up well and, and, and so did the crew, and so I'm really proud of, uh, of the effort that we put forward. Bauer Becking's team Brunel finished fourth, crossing the line on Boxing Day. Sun Hunkai Scallywag took fifth ahead of Turn the Tide on Plastic, just 18 miles behind in sixth. Team Axonabel crossed the line at the bottom of the standings two days behind the leaders. The pressure was now on to repair and reinforce their mast, which sustained heavy damage during a jibe in the Southern Ocean. Uh, yeah, no, of course the mast is the main priority. I mean, I have to say that probably we did a pretty good job out there on the ocean. So, yeah, very short time frame now and it's a bit of a major, so we're getting the rig out as soon as we're finished. And, um, yeah, it will be main priority to uh, hopefully for that uh, for them to get it done in time and for us to be ready for the next leg. Uh, for. The teams have a week to rest and recuperate from the grueling Southern Ocean leg before heading north on leg four to Hong Kong starting the 2nd of January.